Hello everyone. Welcome to the third part of Modeling, Analysis and Design of PEB Structure. I am Surajit Ghosh and in this session, I will discuss how we can model a warehouse structure using analytical modeler and assign tapered section to the column and raptor member. There are various ways to model this structure instead. I will cover most of these methods in my discussion and let you know the easiest way to model this. For more information about different structural and non-structural components of a pre-engineered building, you can check my last video. I want to start with a simple structure like this and once all the modeling methods including physical modeler and automation tools are covered, then we will model a large manufacturing unit using the most suitable method. Let's review the structure first and collect the information which are required for modeling. There are 9 bays in the longitudinal direction with 6 meter center to center distance. Total cross directional span length is 25 meter. Height of the column is 8.5 meter and ridge height is 2.2 meter with 10 degree slope. This column height is from the base plate level. There is a 500 mm pedestal which I don't want to consider in my model. There are 5 purlins at each half of the roof, 2 gut at each side. Horizontal and vertical cross pressings are provided at panel 1, 5 and 9. That's all about the structure geometry. We'll explore rest of the structural information like the end wall and crane gutter information later. The first step of modeling is to fix the working plane. We can generate any structure using plan, side elevation or front elevation. This is an important step as if a wrong plane is selected, that might lead to more modeling time. For example, for any building, we normally generate the floor plan first with the beam layout as this is more complex and then we can easily copy this plan multiple times to generate the columns and rest of the structural elements like wall and slab. For any PEB structure, working with the floor plan is not a good idea as this is very simple. Also, we cannot generate the slope troop using the plan view. The best solution is to generate one bay from the front elevation and if the structure is symmetric, we can repeat this in the longitudinal direction to generate the whole structure. As you know, there are three different modelers in StatPro Connect Edition and today we will use the analytical modeler. Do you know the difference and selection of these modelers depending on the structure type? Let me know in the comments if you want to know more about this. We can import the primary and load combinations generated as per IS-800-2007 code from a seed file. I always use this seed file during new project file generation. This eliminates the process of new primary and combination case generation. As you can notice here, all the primary load case with proper load type and load combinations are imported from the seed file. I will discuss this later during load generation. Now we can start modeling the first bay and there are multiple options to model this. First option, we can create the corner node by providing the node coordinates in this table. Like coordinate of node 1 is 0, 0, 0. Node 2 is 0, 8.5, 0. Node 3 is 12.5, 10.7, 0. Like this. Then we can use the add member option and join these nodes to generate the geometry. Second option, we can create the same geometry using beam grid. We need to edit the default grid as per the dimension. It is already generated in the XY plane with origin at 000. We need to increase the grid spacing in X to 2.5. Height of the column is 8.5 meter with max height 10.7. So, change the spacing in Y to 
and number of grids to 22. Now we can use this grid to draw the frame from 0 to 8.5, then 10.5. We can later change this node coordinate from the node table, finally to 25. Last step, change the Y coordinate of node 3 from 10.5 to 10.7. Third option, which I think is the best solution. Just create a goalpost like frame. So 0, then 8.5, 12.5, 25, and finally to Y equals to 0. Now we can either change the Y coordinate of node 3 to 10.7 or select the node cursor and select node 3 then move it in the vertical direction with height as 2.2 meter this will create the first panel with proper dimension and slope but there is one problem which we should rectify now we want to assign taper section to column and raptor and each taper section has different start and end depth, right? Our first assumption for column, the start depth is 400 mm and end depth is 700 mm. And for raptor, start depth is 700 mm and end depth is 500 mm. Why this column raptor junction has higher depth that I have already discussed in my previous video on depart member optimization? You can check that for more details. We can create tapered I section from the property table. Start depth of first section is 400 mm. Web thickness is 8 mm. End depth is 700 mm. Width of the flange 250 mm. And thickness 12 mm. Bottom flange has same dimensions, so we can skip this and program automatically considers the top flange dimension for the bottom flange. Another tapered section for raptor with start depth 700 and in depth 500. Rest of the dimensions are same. These are the two sections which we want to assign to the column and raptor. We can select the columns and assign the first section and select the raptor and assign the second section. Now check the rendering view. It does not look right. Though the left half is correct, section assignment to the right side raptor and column is not correct. Start and end depth is reversed. To check the reason of this faulty assignment, we can simply press Shift plus E and this will highlight the start and end of each member. Green indicates the start and blue indicates the end of the member. We can notice that the start and end of the right column and raptor is opposite of the left side as we have generated the frame by selecting the nodes in sequence. So when we assign the start depth of raptor as 700 for right raptor, this depth is assigned at the reach, not at the column joint. For the column member, 700 mm depth is assigned at the support level. How to solve this problem? We can create two more tapered sections with start and end depth reversed. But this is not a good solution as this will increase the section number as well as the assignment time. It is better to reverse the orientation of these members. First option, during modeling, we can create the left portion separately and then create the right column and raptor maintaining the same order. Or in this model, we can select these members, go to utilities, beam tools, beam incidences and select the first option to switch the start and end of these members. See, now the start and end node of these two members are reversed and if we look at the rendering view, it looks perfect. We need to fix all these modeling problems before generating the other panels. This problem does not occur if the section profile is uniform, but for tapered section, as the section depth is linked with the member orientation, 
this modification is required. There is another step before we generate the other panels. We need to add the purlin and raptor joints first and then use the translational repeat option which will auto-generate the purlins during the process. And there is another major problem with the tippered section which we need to keep in mind. To illustrate this, I am removing the section property from the left raptor. In this structure, there are 5 purlins at the roof level and 2 guard at each side. We can select the raptor, insert node and create 5 new points which are the purlin raptor joints. After segmentation, if we try to assign the same tapered profile to all these members, which is the second section, see, this section is not assigned properly. Each of the segmented member has a start depth of 700 mm and end depth of 500 mm, which is not correct. We want the section depth at column end as 700 mm, not at each intermediate node. This is one of the major problem of tapered section. When we assign a tapered section to few sequential analytical members, STAD simply assigns the start and end depth to each member. And if we want to assign it correctly, then we need to manually calculate the depth at each intermediate joint, create several new sections with correct start and end depth, and then assign those sections to individual member. For a large model, this is quite tough and time consuming. To solve this problem without any manual calculation, we need to assign the section first and then divide the member. For example, we have already assigned a tapered section to the right raptor. Select this member and insert 5 intermediate nodes. This member is now divided in 6 segments. Check the property table. 6 new tapered sections are added in the table. Each section has different start and end depth and these new sections are assigned to the segmented members. What this means? When program generates an intermediate node, if any section is assigned to the member, then it recalculates the section depth from the assigned section information, create a new section and assign that section to the generated member. So we don't have to manually calculate the intermediate section depth and assign it to the member. Check the rendering view. It looks fine. All intermediate depths are adjusted properly. One problem. If we want to change the depth at latter stage during optimization, for example from 700 to 600 mm, that will take some time as the original section and member information is lost and we need to change the depth of individual member by manually calculating the value. This is a major problem of analytical modeler with tippered section. We can easily change the section using physical modeler or with a custom macro which I will cover later. We can select the column, insert node, two new points and now all the purlin joints are created in this model. For any model with tapered section, I always recommend to assign the section property first and then create the intermediate connections. Also, it is better to complete a single panel first, then repeat this. This frame is now ready. We can select all the members and use translational repeat option. This quick comments toolbar is very handy. Try to customize it with the frequently used tool for quick and easy access. I have already created a video on this, which you can check for more details. Copy this frame in the Z direction nine times with six meter spacing. We want to auto generate the purlins. So switch on the link step option with open base. Open base removes any member at the base level. There is no tie beam at the support level. So we can simply ignore connection at this level. We want to copy everything. And now the structural cage 
with the main frame member and Perlin is ready. We can check the rendering view to confirm that the tapered profiles are assigned correctly. This seems fine. Next step is to create the bracing member, assign property to the Perlin and bracing along with the offset and beta angle. That I will cover in the next part. See you soon in the fourth part of this series.